Yay! Hello, friends! Welcome back to part two of Fourier series, the complex version. Oh, yeah! All right. So, um, we wrote the general form of a Fourier series expansion with complex notation. And we did a little bit of work to figure out an equation to calculate the coefficients um, for a specific function. And now we get to actually apply our knowledge to a problem and see how that works. So to keep it simple and straightforward, we're going to use the same example that we did for a Fourier series expansion with sine and cosine. Um, that was a couple videos ago. I'll link to it in the video description. Um, but uh, to reiterate the function, a uh, quick picture is uh, 0 from negative pi to 0. And then it is 1 from 0 to pi. So if this is f of x and this is x. Um, and then, you know, you could assume that it, it repeats um, like so. But we're only going to focus on this little chunk. Um, one of the reasons is because that is the interval over which we are interested. And once we find those coefficients, then we can be like, cool, and then it works for periodic things. Uh, good times. Okay. So, um... Let's get cracking. So our coefficient equation, cn, equals 1 over 2 pi. And then uh, we plug in the function we are given uh, so that we can solve for the coefficients. And since uh, our function is kind of split over this interval, it means that we want to break up this integral as well. Um, so we have uh, one interval. Interval and integral sound very similar, but they mean very different things. I'll try to be super clear. Um, so the first interval of our integral is from negative pi to zero, and f of x is just zero, which makes our lives way easier because zero multiplied by anything is zero, so I'm going to ignore that, and we'll just say zero dx, whatever, that goes to zero. And then we add in the second interval of our integral um, from zero to pi, and in that case f of x is one. And then we multiply it by e to the negative i n x and multiply that by dx. Okay, so the first part of our interval uh, or integral, whatever, goes to zero. Um, and the second part we can evaluate. So uh, we have the integral from zero to pi of e to the i n x dx. And so the integral of e to the x is just e to the x. Um, oops, I lost the minus sign. Um, but because there's a, an i and an n, a negative i n multiplied by x, those have to come down and we divide by them. Um, so this equals 1 over 2 pi times negative 1 over um, i n uh, times e to the negative i n x from 0 to pi. Um, okay, cool. So now we evaluate this chunk. So we get, I'm going to combine these two pieces, 1 over negative, 1 over uh, 2 uh, n i pi uh, multiplied by e to the negative i n pi minus e to the 0, which is just 1. Bloop. Minus 1. Bloop. Okay, done, right? Ah, not quite yet. Um, so you'll note that we still have an n here. Although n is not a variable, there are infinite numbers of n from negative infinity to infinity. And so we need to figure out if we can narrow that down so that our Fourier series is as accurate as possible. Um, so to do this, uh, I'm going to bring back Euler, uh, the Euler equation um, for e to the i pi. Um, so basically, um, e to the negative i n pi equals cosine of negative n pi plus i sine negative n pi. Okay, so we have two cases here. The first is for even values of n, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, negative 2, negative 4, etc. Um, and the second is for odd values of n, 1, 3, 5, 7, negative 1, negative 3, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and we are going to get different uh, results depending on which type of um, integer we have. So the first part 
that I'll note is that any integer multiple of pi, um, or for any integer multiple of pi, sine goes to zero. So it does not matter whether or not we have an even n or an odd n, sine's gonna go to zero. Okay, so that makes our life a little bit easier. Um, so then we have two conditions which we need to evaluate cosine for. So the first is for even n. And in that case, we have cosine of um, negative 2 pi, negative 4 pi, negative 6 pi, or let's say we had a negative even number. So negative uh, 2 pi, negatives cancel, that's going to give us cosine of 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, etc. It doesn't matter whether our n um, is positive or not. NT, <laughs> sorry, any even number of pi is going to give us a positive one for cosine. So this is gonna give us a positive one. And for odd n, um, that means uh, pi, three pi, five pi, um, for negative values of n, or for positive values of n, that means um, negative pi, negative three pi, negative five pi, etc. So for um, odd, integer multiples of pi, cosine goes to negative one. Uh, and when I'm doing this, I always like to think about the unit circle. Um, so even multiples of pi are going to be on the positive x-axis and negative integer, or sorry, odd integer multiples of pi are going to be on the negative x-axis. It doesn't matter which way you go around the unit circle, whether you go clockwise or counterclockwise, you're always going to end up at the same point. Um, and so that's why the whole, it doesn't matter if your integer is negative or positive, for any even value of, um, of pi, any even integer multiple of pi, I should say, is always going to give us a positive one. And any odd integer multiple of pi is always going to give us a negative one. Okay. Um, so basically what that means is that um, for even n we have a positive one. And so this term is going to give us a positive one minus one, which is zero. Okay, so that's kind of cool. So even values of n go to zero. Um, uh, I'll write that down in a second. For odd values of n, we are going to get a negative one. Negative one minus one is going to give us a negative two. Look at that. Okay, so that we can calculate out. Um, so for odd n, we get negative one over two n i pi times negative two, which is the negatives cancel, the twos cancel, and we just get one over uh, I'm going to write it I N pi. Cool. Okay. So let's erase this and summarize our coefficients. So C N equals zero for even N, um, one over I N pi for odd N. And let's figure out what C0 is. Um, so basically C0, we'll just plug that back into this equation. Um, and so we're going to get 1 over 2 pi. Um, again, we separate the interval. Um, so we only are interested in where f of x is 1, because otherwise the whole thing goes to 0. So the interval is from 0 to pi, where we have 1 times e to the 0. Oh, <laughs> look at that, it goes to 1. So we are going to get 1 over 2 pi times x from 0 to pi, uh, which is 1 over 2 pi times uh, pi minus 0. The pi is cancel, and we get c naught equals 1 half. And so I'm going to write that. c naught equals 1 half. Okay. Look at that! Now we can write the specific uh, Fourier series expansion for this function. Um, and again, the reason why we want to do that is because this function, well, one of the reasons uh, is that this function is really hard to represent and manipulate because it's discontinuous. It's broken, basically. Um, or you can think about it like it has an abrupt change. Um, and it 
that means that it's uh, very difficult to uh, take the derivative of or find the integral of um, without separating it into pieces and doing it piece by piece. And when we're talking about an infinitely repeating function, that can be a little bit challenging. So the Fourier series allows us to manipulate this function and do some other fancy things with it. That would be a lot harder if it was in this form. So our Fourier series complex expansion of this function is going to be our first coefficient, which is one half, plus all of the odd n coefficients. So uh, c1, c3, c5, etc. So that means n is only going to equal odd numbers. Uh, to keep it simple, slash I like being lazy, I'm going to pull out this um, i pi in front and, uh, and then write the terms inside the parentheses. So for positive values of n, we are going to get, uh, let's see, c1 is going to be 1 over 1 um, times e to the ix plus uh, c3, which is 1 over 3. The only thing left in the fraction um, is 1 over n. Um, so 1 over 3 e to the 3ix plus 1 over 5 e to the 5ix plus dot dot dot. And now we do the negative integers of n, uh, which we can do the same thing. We can separate the n from this fraction and just get a negative 1, or sorry, 1 over negative 1 e to the negative ix. So that's n equals negative 1. n equals negative 3 is going to be 1 over negative 3 e to the negative 3ix plus 1 over negative 5 e to the negative 5ix plus dot dot dot. <gasps> Look at that! Cool, right? Um, so we're done. Haha! -ha. This is our answer. And if that's all you had to do, cool! If you had this on a test, you could square box it and then be like, QED, we're done! No problem, boo! Ah, leave the test feeling good. Um, but if we want to determine whether or not the complex expansion is as equally as valid as the sine and cosine expansion, we need to do a little bit more work to rewrite this into a form where we can compare it with the result we got for the sine and cosine expansion. So bear with me, we are going to take a couple of steps to do that. Um, so I'm going to erase both of these so I have more space up here. Um, okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is combine um, the e to the ix and e to the negative ix terms. So when n, uh, when the magnitude of n is the same but the sign is different, we're going to shove those together uh, and you'll see why in a second. Or if you know why, ooh, someone is paying attention in the first video. Um, okay, so m of x equals one half, but all we're doing is rearranging the equation so that we can um, find the right pattern that we're looking for. Um, so one, one over i pi, uh, we are going to get, um, let's see, uh, e to the ix plus e to the negative ix, and that's over one. Um, actually, I'm going to pull the i in, so we're going to have an over i plus e to the 3ix um, plus e to the negative 3ix over negative 3 um, and then plus uh, e to the 5ix, uh oh I'm running out of space, e to the negative 5ix, hopefully you can see that, negative 5 plus dot dot dot. Okay, um, getting closer. Um, oopsies, I forgot my eyes in here. Boop, just like that. Okay, um, and so we are so close. So I'm gonna give you a second to think about what else we need to do to be able to pull out either sine or cosine. We'll play the Jeopardy theme song. Do, 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 do. That's not quite right, but at least it's not copyrighted. <laughs> okay, um, so if you had the idea that we need a two here, yes, you are correct. So to do that, we can do one of my favorite tricks of math and just pull it out by saying, okay, well, if I have a two outside and I brought it in, it would cancel at the bottom. So we're gonna get two over pi, e to the ix plus e to the negative ix over two i. 
So again, this would uh, you'd bring this two in, it would cancel with the fraction, and everything stays the same. We just are rewriting it, which is so cool. I love that we can uh, do that type of thing in math. Um, okay, so plus e to the three i x plus e to the negative three i x over. Oh wait, I want to write this like one third negative. Um, there's two i there. Uh, hold on, okay, that got a little squishy, so I'm gonna make it easier to read. Um, plus one over, I'm gonna write a negative there, and then we get e to the three i x plus e to the negative three i x over uh, two i, and let's do one more term, plus one over negative five, e to the 5ix plus e to the negative 5ix over 2i plus da da da. Okay. Oh, yeah! So look at that! These are the um, expansions of sine, or the equations for sine um, in complex form. Yes! Okay, so now we have 1 half plus 2 over pi times sine of x plus, oops, minus one third sine of three x minus one fifth sine of five x. Oh, plus that, that, that. Yay! Okay. Oh, wait, I think I might have lost a minus sign up here. Mm, that's why. Okay. So this actually should be like that. My bad. And kudos to you if you caught that. Uh, yeah, that's right, because uh, I always forget. So cosine has the positive sign, uh, or the, yeah, that's confusing. Cosine has a positive uh, term in between the e's, and sine has a negative. Uh, and if I had been a little bit more diligent about um, keeping track of that with the fractions. Um, so this negative actually only applies to this one, because the even ends do, or so the even positive ends do not have that. So that should have been like that. Um, and then these are gonna be positive. Cool, okay, so this is why I have notes. <laughs> um, good times. That's it. So, boom, QED little box says, this is the same result that we got as last time. And as I look at my work, I'm like, wow, that is down slopey. Um, great, okay. So all of that is to say, the complex version of the Fourier series expansion works the same as the sine and cosine expansion, which is great because with the complex version, we only have to remember one equation instead of two to find the coefficients. And uh, this summation, uh, the general form of the Fourier series um, is a lot smaller. And personally, I think it's easier to remember, but um, all that is to say, if you prefer working with sines and cosines, that's totally fine. It's kind of up to you. Um, I also really think that the connection between uh, e to the i and x, sine and x, and cosine and x is really, really cool. Um, so yeah, please let me know if you have any questions on the example that we did, uh, the derivation of the complex version of the Fourier series. Um, or if you want to learn more about e to the inx, sine nx, cosine nx, and all that good stuff. Um, cool. All right. So thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time, friends. Bye!